Hello and welcome to this very quick video aimed at all of you iNav pilots. More fixed wing than quads, but actually applies to both. Now I do get lots of questions from pilots asking about how can I make it hard to disarm and I've done lots and lots of different videos in Edge and OpenTX about how you can combine different things. So the arming switch will only disarm if the throttle is in a low position. And in fact there's something called disarm kill switch, a setting in iNav that kind of does a similar thing. But in my humble opinion, doing anything that makes disarming more complicated to do than just flick a switch is potentially getting into dangerous territory. Now, I have had situations where I have accidentally disarmed a model in flight and then basically had to dead stick it. Now, obviously, in a quadcopter, when you disarm, it's just kind of dropped to the ground. With something like this wing that I'm currently building in the INAF for Beginners 2023 series, the motor will stop responding, plot will goes dead. Control surfaces, however, will still work, so you can, if you have enough altitude, fly it back to you. However, what you really want to be able to do is to be able to rearm it in flight and pick up where you left off, and that is something that you can set up in iNav. Now, this is expected to change in iNav 7.0, so if you're watching it and iNav 7.0 was out, go and check my later videos on that. But if you're an iNav 6 pilot, or even older potentially, then you can add this into your model so that in the unlikely event that you do catch the arming switch and disarm your model in flight, you can just rearm it and carry on as normal. Now this all revolves around something called uh, extra arming safety. Now historically, I used to have that turned on. The default now is to allow, allow bypass and there's also off. So the three positions are off, on and allow bypass. If it's on, which is the way I like to have it, it won't allow INAV to arm unless everything is perfectly happy. You have a GPS lock, you're not in one of the navigation modes and those kind of things as well. I tend to set it to on once I've got all my setups done so that it'll only arm at the field when it is completely happy. If it doesn't arm, then I know something weird is going on and I need to investigate it. I'd rather not risk a model for the sake of trying to fly when INAV isn't completely happy. The other option is allow bypass, that's the default now. Allow bypass lets you bypass it by holding the yaw stick while you are flicking the arm switch. Uh, that's okay, and I think that's fine on the bench. Personally, I don't like it at the field. It does mean that on the bench, maybe if you don't have a 3D lock, but you want to test whether or not you can arm the model, if you're indoors maybe, that's a nice way for you to be able to get past that issue and just test that it does arm up. And the last one is off. This is incredibly dangerous because it means that then you can arm irrespective of what the status of the model is, even if it isn't ready to fly at all. Uh, but actually, that ability to turn extra arming safety off is what we need. Ideally, what we want to be able to do with iNav is when the model is flying, for iNav to detect that that's the case and then to turn the extra arming safeties off. So it means that you can rearm when it's flying and it removes all those extra checks because everything must have been okay, right? Because you're already flying. So let me show you how you do this. So what we'll do is we'll connect to the model and then what we need to do is we need to go and go into the programming tab. But first of all, let me just show you extra arming safety. Those are the three values. Allow bypass is the default one. However, I'm just going to set it to on on my model here. That's the way I like it when I know everything is working. That way it guarantees that the model will only arm when everything is perfect. Allow bypass though is very handy if you're on the bench and you want to test something and force it to arm just so you can do the testing. With the model rebooted, let's go and set this up. So we'll go into programming and here are the couple of things that we need to set up. So we need to set up an operation of when A is greater than B, where A is a flight operator and I would go for 3D speed. Uh, that 3D speed is in centimeters per second. If it's above a certain value, i.e. if the model is flying faster than this value, then logical condition zero is on. Now, because it's centimetres a second, not miles or kilometres per hour, you do have to do a little bit of a conversion. And 10 miles an hour is about 450 centimetres per second. However, it's pretty easy if you want to figure it out to do the conversion. You can just go into something like Google and you can just ask it, see what is 10 miles an hour in centimetres a second? 
and it'll show you. So I usually go for 450, that pretty much guarantees it. Now the reason I'm using the 3D speed rather than the flat speed is that 3D speed also takes into account uh, increases and decreases in altitude. So if for example you were diving straight at the ground and you had this instance then it would still pick that up and still allow you to rearm. So I would personally recommend that you do it this way with flight 3D speed and set it for similar value. Next thing we do then is the next logic conditions we set to override the arming safety when logic condition zero is one. So when logic condition zero is activated, i.e. we're flying more than 10 miles an hour, override arming safety is disabled and that means I can rearm it in flight. So that's all you have to do. If you set that up, then you should be able to find that if you accidentally disarm while you're flying, then you can just flick your arm switch back and you are good to go. A big problem with this, particularly with HD systems, is that disarming the flight controller stops the recording of the HD system as well. And I've had issues where I've accidentally disarmed models, particularly because I'm testing different radios and I'm not quite sure where all my switches are and catching those switches. So it's definitely worthwhile having it, particularly on these ELRS connected models. But the fact that you lose the last three or four seconds of your HD image, which you really need to play back in order to figure out where the thing crashed, is a disaster. So what are the drawbacks if any of doing this? Well, first of all is be aware, as I said at the beginning, this will change your 9F 7.0 or it's expected to. So be aware of that. Uh, obviously, if you are hovering in a quadcopter and you accidentally disarm, then until the quadcopter thinks it's traveling more than 10 miles an hour, probably in a downward direction, you won't be able to rearm. However, with something like a fixed wing, it should always be above that level when it's flying. Although you might have to tweak that 450 um, centimeters per second value to get it to the level that works for you. Uh, the model will think it's moving around slightly because of the GPS variances at the field. If you find that it's accidentally turning on that logic condition when it's sat still, you might have to increase that value slightly. The other big tip I'll give you is that by default, the GPS home location is stored at first arm. Uh, that means when you arm it before you throw it or you take off, then that is the one that is stored. Make sure you haven't changed that to each arm or something else, because that means that when you rearm it in flight, potentially that new location in the middle of a field half a mile away is going to be the home location, and that's where it's going to fly back to in the event of a failsafe. That's not what you want. So do make sure that it is continued to be set to first arm. But hopefully that helps those of you that are on INAV pilots. And next time you are setting up a model, if you do this little tweak, it means that you can arm in flight and you don't have that deaded oh dear moment when you actually accidentally catch the army switch. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.